Good morning, everyone. Buongiorno, we say in Italian. Very good, very good. I didn't expect to find snow in Witten. Coming from warm Rome, uh, I didn't expect uh, to be snowy here. But uh, I, uh, I feel it a real privilege to be with you. And uh, thank you for coming. And thank you for bearing with my Italian accent for uh, the rest of the presentation. The final section of the Gospel of Mark is indeed an awkward text of the Bible. Its belonging to the original Gospel of Mark is disputed. It was perhaps added later. It contains several elements that makes it unique and at times difficult to square with other canonical writings. It is indeed an awkward text. And when I first realized that this was the text that had been assigned to me, I asked myself, what's wrong with me? <laughs> what have I done wrong with Wheaton? <laughs> that Wheaton wants me to expiate. But after recovering from a sense of initial despair, I began working and reflecting on this awkward text and praying over it, to the point that now I thank Wheaton College for the honor of speaking on this passage. Yes, it is an awkward text, but full of challenges for us Christians as we seek to obey the mission that the risen Lord has given us. In this text, the risen Christ sends his disciples to the world, verse 15. And in doing so, he causes them to grapple with three big, huge challenges. Mission is indeed not an easy task. At times, it is an unsettling endeavor. And here are three reasons why it is so. The first reason is this. There is an awkward eternity to be presented. An awkward eternity to be presented. The Lord gives the command to his disciples to preach the good news to all creation. They and we are meant to speak, proclaim, and announce the gospel, the good news. This expectation is that there will be those who will believe and therefore will be saved. Salvation is the eternal destiny of those who will believe in the good news. And to this we say, amen, hallelujah. There is an eternal des destiny for those who believe in the gospel. Salvation. So far, so good. But here it comes the awkward peace. Verse 16 says, whoever does not believe will be condemned. It is not granted that all will believe and therefore will be saved. There is another side of the coin that is condemnation for those who don't believe. And this is as real as salvation is for those who do believe. Now, condemnation is mentioned in, in opposition to salvation. If salvation means being accepted, pardoned, and welcomed into the kingdom of God, on the contrary, condemnation means being judged, sentenced, and rejected from the kingdom of God. I know condemnation is awful. But it's part of what the gospel tells that people will face if they don't believe. Friends, especially in our generation and in your generation, condemnation is a message so difficult to preach, so difficult to articulate, so difficult to accept. 
It sounds arrogant, it sounds outmoded, it sounds divisive, it sounds politically incorrect, it sounds socially unacceptable. Yet, yet, it is part of the outcomes of the message of the gospel. The good news is not a message of universal salvation for all, regardless the response. The good news is, is extremely serious. Either you believe and you are saved, or you don't believe and you are condemned. In a sense, the prospect of condemnation is part of the message, and we have no authority to change it. Our only moral obligation is to be faithful to it by preaching it graciously, but truthfully. Mission is such only if it is, if it is faithful to the command of the risen Lord, even when we don't like it, or when we would like to refrain, or refrain from being bold about certain aspects of it. Jesus told us the message to proclaim and accomplished what was needed to make, the, to make it effective. I come from a city whose kind of prevalent Christianity makes it very difficult to talk about condemnation. Everybody wants to hear about mercy. And the present pope champions that attitude. Mercy to all, mercy, mercy for everyone, mercy for all, affirming everyone, inviting them in, but not making it clear that mercy has another side of a coin, that is condemnation. This kind of gospel would truncate the verse and eliminate the part referring to condemnation. But is this a fair treatment of the gospel, or is it not a manipulation of the gospel? In contemporary missiology, we often hear about the need for integrity. The integrity of the witnesses, yes. The integrity of the church, yes. The integrity between words and deeds, yes. We are called to be integral people people of integrity. But integrity begins with being faithful to the message of the gospel and its consequences, as the Master has taught us. We cannot be people of integrity if we miss to tell ourselves and others that we either believe and are saved or we don't and we are condemned. Yes, this is an awkward passage, and this is an awkward challenge, especially for our and your generation. And yet, this is part of the mission that the Lord has given us to accomplish. There is a second awkward aspect to the challenge that the risen Christ gives to his disciple. And I call it an awkward ontology, awkward eternity, speaking about salvation and condemnation, an awkward reality of things, ontology, narrative of things, in that here the supernatural is part of the ordinary life. The second awkward aspect of this text is that it is replete with references to strange things and unusual expectations. It speaks about demons driven out, new tongues being spoken, snakes being picked up, deadly poison being drank, and sick, sick people being healed. Now, I know that these supernatural events described here did happen in the Book of Acts as part of the authentication and the affirmation of the apostles given by the Lord. Apart from the episode of the poison, which is told in the fragments of Papias, not in the book of Acts. 
The book of Acts, Acts is the enactment of these signs of authentication, authentication of these disciples of Jesus. They are power encounters, miracles, wonders, unique events, which tell us, welcome to the supernatural world of the gospel of the risen Christ. In technical terms, we are confront confronted here with a supernatural ontology, a reality marked by an intrinsic openness to the supernatural. God is sovereign over the natural, the cyclical, the predictable events of history and nature, but is also sovereign over the unpredictable and extraordinary events. We must admit that we as Western rationalists and rather skeptical people find these things rather embarrassing. We don't have the right cultural and spiritual categories to deal with the supernatural. We find it at times problematic, if not scary. We want everything under control, predictable, and planned in advance. We don't like the intrusion of the supernatural in our predictable, ordinary lives. Whatever view we have about the supernatural gifts for today, the point here is that Christian mission needs to be open to the divine supernatural. It needs to be open to the divine supernatural. The supernatural is actually part of God's natural created reality. And it's God, God is free to act in ordinary as well as in extraordinary ways. As people sent to mission, we should expect these power encounters with the demonic world, whatever form they may take. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against our spiritual enemy. We should be open to see God moving in unexpected and unpredicted ways in his supernatural power. We should be open to see the wonders of God happening around us and in us. The gospel is the supernatural message of God worked out in supernatural ways. We cannot put God and his gospel in our box and control it. The gospel is not at our disposal that we can make it totally 100% under our control. The mission of God needs the proper supernatural view of things to be accomplished. So be open to swim against the current and preach the gospel of salvation and condemnation. But also be stretched to God's supernatural works as part of your ordinary and daily life. Be open to it in order to accomplish the mission of God. The third and final awkward aspect of this passage, it gives us an awkward sense of eternity being divided between those who will be believe and will be saved and those who will not believe and will be condemned. The second is that we are open to the supernatural reality of God moving in ordinary and extraordinary ways. But thirdly, a final point needs to be made about this awkward text. After commissioning his disciples, the risen Lord ascended to the heavens and sat at the right hand of God the Father, as verse 19 tells us. God's world is stretchable, both in terms of ontology, reality, as well as in terms of cosmology, the nature of the world, the universe. 
We need to be open to see God moving in extraordinary ways, and we need also to stretch our cosmology in order to, be, to accommodate the reality of the throne of the Father and the Son sitting at the right hand of the Father. As King of the universe, Jesus is now seated on the throne. In the outworking of mission, there is a contrast here. While Jesus is seated, having accomplished the work of salvation, once and for all achieved on the cross and at the resurrection, he is seated there. His friends go out. He is seated. We move out. While Jesus is on the throne, his disciples are on the road. His mission happens with this dynamics. King Jesus chooses to act through us, through me and you. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he wants us to move around in order to proclaim the message of the good news for those who will believe and for those who will be condemned. Our life is not yet a place of rest, but a road to walk and a world to reach, to reach out. From Jerusalem to Rome, from Jerusalem to Wheaton, and to everywhere else in the world, that's the dynamics of the way in which mission takes place. The one sitting on the throne is moving everything around. From the throne of God, is moving his people around his world in order to accomplish the mission that he has entrusted us. This is another unique aspect of this awkward text. The Gospel of Mark was probably written in Rome. I come from Rome with this message from the Gospel of Mark to encourage you to be attuned to God's mission for your lives. So be faithful to the message of the gospel, even if it has sharp edges. Don't be ashamed of the gospel, even when it seems like an awkward message to preach. Be faithful to the message of the gospel in its integrity. Be open to the supernatural work of God in and through your lives. Be open to that. God is God, and God cannot be put in a box. And be on the move as King Jesus will lead you and use you mightily. May God bless you. Amen.